Uh, it's Thursday, the 10th of August, 2023. This is probably the most depressing <laughs> video I've ever done. But it's about love and loss. And we all have loss. The longer you live, the more loss you suffer. Whether it's your spouse or your children, grandchildren, family members, animals. Uh, I was married to Steve for 10 years, between 81 and 91. Never remarried, never lived with anyone after that. I, I knew, a long time ago I knew that I was a loner and I was not really designed to live with anybody. I, being a loner when I was a toddler, it was a matter of um, survival, really. You know, my mother slept all day because she knew that my father had a mistress across town and she didn't want to sleep with him at night anymore. So I was left, I was the youngest, I was left to kind of. Um, you know, fend for myself, really, I mean, I, I, jokingly, I refer to myself as being a feral child, <laughs> but really, I was, uh, but I've always, that made me an independent person, and not relying on anybody to be there for me, or care for me, I've always just kind of, you know, but anyway, Steve came along, Steve bought me off with a bag of cat toys, <laughs> And we were married in 81 and uh, divorced as friends in 91. Uh, and I watched him die a few years ago uh, through alcoholism. And it was really sad. But he lived life on his own terms, you know. So when, when he and I divorced, I took the birds, he took the cats. <laughs> So I went for, I don't know, 13 or 14 years without cats. And I had had cats all of my life. I had this, my first cat I remember was, was it Thumbelina or somebody like that? I mean, this cat was an orange cat. I used to drag it around by his tail and he'd let me brush his teeth. Like with toothpaste and a toothbrush. I mean, the shit he went through. <laughs> For me, it was really bizarre. So, but anyway, um, uh, Christmas Eve 2005, when I went down to the local grocery store to check on their their house cat that had a bladder infection, as I'm leaving, this cream-colored cat came screaming out of the woods. <laughs> Just skinny as a rail. You know, it's the ribs sticking out like a xylophone. Just screaming. He, I opened the door. He jumped into my car. And I'm like, damn. Dude, what are you doing? I said, I can feed and water you. But if you're a sickly cat, you're screwed. Because I have enough money to take you back and forth to the vet. So I named him David. And uh, he was an intact male. And he kind of came and went for the first few months. I, you know, he, I, I made the basement for him uh, with the cat box and the food and the water. But he never used a cat box because he means a feral cat, you know. So a couple of months later, he brings his uh, pregnant girlfriend home. And he swears to me that they're not his. He's just helping out a girl in trouble. And I'm like, okay, whoop. So she has the first batch, and they were all feral. I tried to socialize them, and she would drag them out and take them to all these different places, and only a few of those survived. And about six weeks later, I hear, rawr, 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 and then I look outside, and, <laughs> and David, and I call her Mommy, her name, but her, her real name was Hermione. Hermione uh, Farthingale, <laughs> David Bowie's first girlfriend, I think. But anyway, they were having sex, so 
I ran to get the camera, and by the time I got out, he was done having sex and was smoking a cigarette. Anyway, uh, 63 days later, she had another batch of babies. And anyway, I ended up with eight kittens, plus Mommy and David. And the thing with having a whole batch of babies is that they come in at one time and then, you know, they all go out at about the same time. And I've had a lot of loss over the last six months or so, eight months. I lost Peter and um, Elliot and Papa all within about a two week span. And then I had two left. M Mommy, and <laughs> Mommy and Lewis, I think, got eaten by coyotes. But that's another story. But um, So, I had two left. And then I finally, we finally lost the battle with Choo Choo yesterday. She'd had, she'd been battling this upper respiratory thing for about six months. She'd come and go. And I, I knew the time was coming when she would quit eating. And I... <sighs> spent a shit ton of money last month trying to keep her alive and, and it worked for a while but then you know it just it just didn't work <sighs> and uh, she was put down yesterday so I'm down to the last the last of the litter and oddly enough it's it's the daughter that David fathered <laughs> you know it was the Christabel my di dilute calico <gasps> and I brought her in last year about a year and a half ago really after she was gone for three and a half weeks and came home with a multiple fractures in her back leg so I had to have her leg taken off made a house cat out of her and <gasps> And she, uh, you know, she used the litter box for a year, but now she's senile. And now I have to keep my hallway lined with pee pads. So she's got the largest litter box in all of kittendom. But that's okay. It's okay. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Because she loves being in my lap. And when I touch the tan fur, I know it's David. And I've, I still have a connection through Christabel with David. And David is the cat that I send to the bridge for anybody that I see on my page that loses one of their fur babies. He's, I miss him so much and I'd really give anything to have him back. But he has an important job now. So I've got one 18-year-old kitty left and I've got Bob, who's 11, and I've got Daryl, who's 10. And you may hear uh, <laughs> Artemis calling in the background. She's 26, my auger buzzard, and she's starting to decline. She's got a cataract in her left eye. She's having trouble seeing, and it probably won't be much longer for her, but, you know, you just have to love whomever you have in your life. You've got to love them with all your might and do everything you can for them while they're here. Because once they're gone, you know, all you have left are your memories. And we'll never get them back. You know, your memories live forever. But the other thing you have to do is you have to fill that hole in your heart. You've got to spackle it with another life form, whether it's a, another bird or another cat, or what you know, whatever your animal choice is. You can't stop loving. That's one thing that I learned from my mother, but in the reverse way. She had a, a, a Chihuahua named Chico when I was a child, and we were all growing up. I was the youngest of three. And that son of a bitch hated my guts with a passion. He bit me. He attacked me. He he was an awful being. 
he was horrible. But my mother loved him, and he loved her. And whenever he went missing, she never loved again. And I had decided at that point, and I was 13 when, you know, when he, he disappeared. So we're talking over, I don't know, 50-something years ago. She just shut down. She never had another pet. It never really cared about anything or anybody ever again. And I just decided that I was not going to be that way. And that I would continue to spackle the hole left in my heart as someone in my life died. And, uh, and I would just keep moving forward. Sometimes you make a lateral move. Sometimes you even move a couple of steps back and that's okay. But You just have to keep moving forward. So, there goes Artemis again. So, if I stand with Artemis and hand feed her, she eats a lot more. Her keel is just thin, you know, just sharp. So, I know she's on the decline and, you know, you just have to keep trying to move forward and be grateful and appreciate what you have while you have it because we're not guaranteed anything you know okay so that's about 12 minutes of me boohooing and carrying on so just be happy be grateful be appreciative of the loved ones around you whether they're human or animal it's all good, okay?